Hello everyone, welcome back to One Touch Pharmacology. In this tutorial, we'll be discussing the pathophysiology of pain and the pharmacology of analgesics. This topic would be discussed under the following headings. The definition of pain, classification of pain, pain pathway, the ascending pathway and the descending inhibitory pathway, drugs used in management of pain, that is analgesics. The word pain is derived from a Latin word that is poena. Poena is a goddess of divine retribution. It also means pain, penalty or punishment. Pain is defined as an unpleasant sensory and emotional experience associated with actual or potential tissue damage or described in terms of such damage. Moving on to the history of pain, French philosopher, mathematician and scientist René Descartes was the first to conceive the theory of pain pathway. He believed that there are certain channels that connect the skin to the brain and these channels carry messages from the peripheral pain receptors to the brain centers. So René Descartes came up with the idea that if by some means we could break the transmission of messages from the peripheral pain receptor to the brain centers pain can be managed. Now the question arises, is the pain good or bad for you? And definitely for the person who experiences pain, it's not something good. But then, pain is something that alerts your body's defense mechanism to react towards a stimulus and to avoid further damage to the body. Nociceptive pain. Nociception is derived from the word nocere which means to hurt. It is perception of a noxious stimulus, a response towards actual or potential tissue damage. Neuropathic pain. Neuropathic pain is a pathological pain. It is associated with nerve injury or damage. It is usually seen in diabetes mellitus, trauma or tumors. Inflammatory pain. Inflammatory pain is a defense mechanism within the body to eradicate necrotic cells and to initiate cell repair. So let's get familiar with certain terminologies like hyperalgesia and allodynia. So what is hyperalgesia? Hyperalgesia is an exaggerated response to a noxious stimuli. And allodynia is sensation of pain in response to an innocuous stimuli or a non-noxious stimuli. So what are the receptors that are involved in the transmission of pain? They are free nerve endings of A delta and C fibers. These receptors respond to thermal, mechanical and chemical stimuli. These receptors are distributed widely in the skin, the muscles, the joint capsules, bone and the internal organs. There are some differences between the A delta fibers and the C fibers. The A delta fibers are myelinated whereas the C fibers are unmyelinated. A delta fibers they are thicker and they have a faster rate of conduction whereas C fibers are thin and they have the slowest rate of conduction. The A delta fibers respond to thermal and mechanical stimuli whereas C fibers are polymodal that means it responds to thermal, mechanical and chemical stimuli. There are some silent receptors in the C fibers also. These receptors are activated only at the time of inflammation. The pain carried by the A delta fibers is well localized whereas the C fibers carry pain which is poorly localized. Wondering how these mechanical, chemical or thermal events are transmitted across the nerve fibers? This is by means of a process called as transduction. We look into the transduction process in a bit more detail. The primary efferent neuron that is the A delta fibers and C fibers have certain cation channels which respond to thermal, mechanical or the chemical stimuli. The cation channels that respond to the thermal stimuli are grouped under transient receptor family. Examples are TRPV1, TRPV2 and TRM. 
The V stands for vanilloid whereas M stands for menthol. The cation channels that respond to the chemical stimuli include the acid sensitive ion channels, the P2X, P2Y receptors which respond to adenosine and B1 and B2 receptors which respond to bradykinin. The cation channels that respond to the mechanical stimuli is still not clear. So what happens is when there is a chemical, mechanical or thermal stimuli, these cation channels are activated and there is influx of sodium and calcium which leads on to membrane depolarization and when the depolarization reaches the threshold for activation of the voltage gated sodium channels these channels open up that is the voltage gated channels open up and there is generation of action potential this is called as transduction that is a chemical event or a mechanical event or a thermal event is converted into an electrical event. The pain pathway. Following a noxious stimuli, impulses are carried via the first order neuron or the primary efferent neuron. This neuron is a pseudo unipolar neuron with the cell body located in the dorsal root. This splits up into two axons. One of the axon extends into the periphery and the other one terminates in the dorsal horn of the spinal cord. The second order neuron is located in the dorsal horn in the rexit lamina of the spinal cord. This neuron then decussates in the anterior commissure and ascends cranially in the spinothalamic tract to the ventroposterolateral nucleus of the thalamus. From the thalamus, the third order neuron arises and this terminates in the somatosensory cortex and this forms the pain pathway. So what is the mechanism behind hyperalgesia and allodynia? There are two processes involved called as peripheral sensitization and central sensitization. These processes lower the threshold for activation and increase their responsiveness. Let's first see what is peripheral sensitization. On repeated exposure to noxious stimuli, reduces the threshold to stimulation and increases firing rate. Inflammatory mediators like adenosine, bradykinin, prostaglandin E2 and protons are released which interact with the second messengers like protein kinase A and protein kinase C. These second messengers phosphorylate the cation channels present at the primary efferent neuron or the first order neuron and the voltage gated sodium channels, thus increasing membrane depolarization and action potential. The pathology behind Hyperalgesia and allodynia is not just limited to the primary efferent neuron. It also extends to the second order neuron located in the dorsal horn and also to the brain. So this is something called as central sensitization. So let's see what happens here. On repeated exposure to high intensity stimulation, there is increased release of neurotransmitters and this causes permanent changes in the brain wiring and response resulting in neuronal plasticity and development of memory because of development of neuronal plasticity and memory the patient experiences pain even in the absence of noxious stimuli this is what happens in neuropathic pain the main culprit behind the neuropathic pain is believed to be the neurotransmitter glutamate which is there a linear relationship between the gravity of injury and the pain felt. You might have noticed soldiers in the war front continuing in the battlefield even after losing their limbs or after getting severely injured. If you are a cricket lover, this sight of Anil Kumble bowling with a broken jaw in the 2002 Antigua test would be familiar to you. From your own experience, you might have noticed that as children, when you got injured in the playground, you continued to play without feeling any pain. The pain kind of struck you or you noticed the pain only after you stopped the 
game or you came into your classrooms okay so what has happened here is it just the indomitable spirit of the soldiers or anil kumble which helped them carry on with their endeavors despite of the injury here comes the role of pain modulation body's own analgesic system like the ascending pain pathway you have a parallel descending inhibitory pathway which modulates the pain and these pathways mainly release endogenous opioids like endorphins encephalins and dynorphins and these act as endogenous analgesic the main center involved in the endogenous analgesic system or the descending inhibitory pain pathway is the periaqueductal gray periaqueductal gray is a gray matter that surrounds the central canal and this periaqueductal gray is connected or controlled by higher centers of the brain and these release endogenous opioids and help in modulation of pain the periaqueductal gray is controlled by higher centers like cortex amygdala thalamus and the parabrachial nucleus it is in turn connected to the rostroventral medulla which is composed of the raphia magnus nucleus which is the main serotonergic nucleus and nucleus reticularis paragigantocellularis in the medulla and this rostroventral medulla has downstream projections to the dorsal horn cells of the spinal cord and thus inhibiting pain transmission from the dorsal horn to the thalamus thus inhibiting the pain pathway there is also a descending pathway from the locus ceruleus which is the main nucleus for norepinephrine and this also sends descending inhibitory pathway to the dorsal horn thus inhibiting transmission of pain from the dorsal horn to the thalamus thus you can notice that there are downstream projections from the periaqueductal gray the rostroventral medulla and the locus ceruleus which helps in modulation of pain so apart from the descending inhibitory pathway there is one more mechanism by which the pain is modulated this is called as the gate control theory and this was postulated by meslach and wall you might have noticed that when you get injured if you rub on that area or when you press that area the pain slightly reduces so how is this possible so let's look into that pain is carried by a delta or c fibers these a delta or c fibers project onto the second order neurons in the dorsal horn and this ascends up cranially via the spinothalamic tract and ends in the brain but when you rub onto the injured area the receptors now involved are the a beta fibers these fibers are thicker and have a faster rate of conduction and on their way up to the brain they stimulate a inhibitory interneuron and this inhibitory interneuron projects on to the second order neuron which was involved in the transmission of pain and thus it inhibits the second order neuron that transmit the pain thereby when you press on to the injured area the a beta fibers are stimulated and these fibers would inhibit the transmission of pain now we'll move on to the pharmacology of analgesics we'll be primarily discussing nsaids that is non steroidal anti inflammatory drugs and opioids though there are other adjuvant analgesics like the newer anti epileptic drugs the snris but we'll be keeping our focus to the main analgesics that is nsaids and opioids here opioids has primarily central action which includes spinal and supraspinal action and peripheral action as well let's first look into the supraspinal action of opioids opioid suppresses both perception as well as emotional component of pain thereby pain ceases to become a suffering opioids act on the cortex and the limbic system thereby altering the interpretation as well as processing of pain impact apart from that opioids also stimulate the periaqueductal gray which is involved in the descending inhibitory pathway this periaqueductal gray has projections to medulla thus activating the medullospinal release of encephalin 
serotonin, norepinephrine from locus cerulis at the level of dorsal horn and thus it attenuates the dorsal horn excitability thereby reducing pain transmission. The spinal site of action of opioids. In the presynaptic terminal that is in the primary efferent neuron it reduces calcium influx thereby reducing release of the excitatory neurotransmitters thereby preventing impulse transmission from the first order neuron to the second order neuron. It also acts on the mu receptors present in the second order neuron thereby it increases potassium conductance. Increasing potassium conductance would hyperpolarize the second order neuron evoking a inhibitory postsynaptic potential thereby excitability of the second order neuron is lost. This also would impair impulse transmission from the first order neuron to the second order neuron. The mechanism of action of non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. These drugs mainly have peripheral analgesic action as compared to opioids which has primarily central analgesic action. Prostaglandin is an algesic agent. Prostaglandins sensitize the primary efferent neuron and it also amplifies the action of other algesic agents like bradykinin, interleukin and tumor necrosing factor alpha. So by blocking the synthesis of prostaglandin by inhibiting the enzyme cyclooxygenase, NSAIDs act as analgesics. Off late NSAIDs are also believed to have some central action. It blocks the prostaglandin synthesis in the spinal dorsal horn as well as the brain thereby inhibiting sensitization that is produced by prostaglandins. Music